short his life. Speak out. It's mine. He's yours. He belongs to Jesus. His body is the temple of the Spirit. And you made the biggest mistake of letting him come to this place. Holy Ghost, fire right now all over your body. How you destroyed his life. Speak out. He hates you. He hates me. How do you destroy his health? How, how, what'd you do with his health? He hates. He hates what? Everything. He hates everything. Why, why have you done to his relationships? He doesn't deserve any. He doesn't deserve anything. You broke every relationship that he had. Is that true? He doesn't have anything. Hatred. Selfishness. Jealousy. Jealousy. What else? rage what else emptiness emptiness how would you destroy his finances what would you do to his finances he buys things he buys things and what anything anything we have fun speak out yeah. how would you destroy his life speak out his emptiness he has emptiness yes emptiness how did you he enter his on. life through what means did you enter his life? He gave up when I told him it would be fine. You, he, he, he gave up. I convinced him. You convinced him what? God isn't real. You convinced him that God isn't real. Well, you made the biggest mistake allowing him to come into this place. And right now, we'll expose every darkness that is in his life. We can defy the Holy Spirit. We'll drive out him out. Holy Ghost, fire in the name of Jesus. Every darkness, anything that has to do with him. Holy Ghost, fire in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, fire in the name of Jesus from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. Holy Ghost, fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Because of Christ, we declare you free, healed, and delivered in Jesus' mighty name. Stand up. Stand up. How do you, how do you feel right now? What's, what's happening with you? With what? what? What just happened? Do you remember what happened right now? Standing up. You just remember standing up. You don't remember saying that uh, you gave him anger, you, you took away his money, you destroyed his life. Okay, so that demon that was in your life, that tormenting your life by the, by the Spirit of God right now, it's been exposed and it's been expelled and Jesus Christ has set you free. Stay close to Jesus and far away from sin so that this deliverance, the miracle that God has done in your life will remain permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. Just say, thank you, Jesus. I'm free. Thank you, Jesus. I'm free. So what is your name? Austin. And Austin, was that you speaking over there? No. <laughs> okay. Now, Austin, um, what happened to you? How did that evil spirit, when did you begin to start to see that that evil spirit start operating in your life? Um, when I was 17, I tried to take my own life. Um, I started to see this, this old man come into me in dreams. And he would stand across a river and just tell me, just cross the river, come over and be with me. I'll take care of you. I'll be your friend. And I saw him six or seven times over the years. So every, at 17, you were trying to take your life. This old man shows up in the dream who you mentioned to me that he was very comforting and like very drawing. And he would stand across the river. And the river many times in the dream speaks of death. And he was calling him across to come to that side. And it happened five or six times. And you mentioned that it would happen every time you would go through the hardest times of your life. Correct? Yeah. It was anytime I just felt hopeless. Anytime I felt like there was just no turning back from where I was. I was at rock bottom. I would just have a dream that night and I'd wake up and I would just feel like killing the first person I saw. I was so hateful when I woke up and it would last for a week or two sometimes. You know, I would just... Who, would you, who did you think that man was? I didn't know until uh, I actually made a friend who, uh, she was into witchcraft and... And you mentioned she was doing wood. Yeah, it was... Um, he's actually the keeper of the crossroads uh, between earth and hell. And she told me all about him and described him perfectly. And so she begins to describe to you this yeah. man that you see in a dream. Mm -hmm. and, and what was the name that she gave him? Uh, his name is Legba. Okay, so she begins to even has a name mm -hmm. and everything. She begins to say that he is the keeper between heaven and, uh, and, and death or earth and death mm -hmm. and everything. And what did she tell you to do? Uh, she told me how to make offerings to him, little candies and toys and chili peppers for some To a guy in the dream? And, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, you know... If you set up an altar like this and just leave him little things, then when you come back in the morning, it'll be gone. And then you'll have some blessing in your life. Something great will happen. And 
things did happen. I had a job with more money than I knew what to do with. Um, you know, I had this nice apartment that I was living in. Everything was cool, you know, mm -hmm. I, so I thought. And then I'd go to sleep, just cry myself to sleep every night and didn't know why. And I would wake up and just wish that I hadn't. And I didn't know why. And I was miserable. And so, Austin, you grew up with a Christian background. So you knew about God. Yeah. Did it ever register into your mind, setting up candies for people you see in a dream? <laughs> Uh, getting advice from a widow lady probably not a good idea no you know or because it just you were at that point well, where you didn't care his 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 deal is he's the uh, the trickster they call him the deceiver mm -hmm. and so I thought well why not he's a friend you know I give my friends rides to work I give my friends food if they're hungry I give my friends clothes if they need it I'll give this old man a piece of candy <laughs> <laughs> he's just an example of a scheme it's not a Craigslist scheme, voodoo scheme, where you just get played for. Now on Sunday, you, you got saved about three weeks ago. You gave your life to Jesus three weeks ago. And then you knew that prayer line is going to be on Sunday. Yeah. Now you've never seen the prayer line before. Mm -hmm. So you don't even know if we're going to pray with oil, hose, or <laughs> nothing. You actually thought we're gonna, just going to come and do like this over you and that's it. Yeah. Or, or like that, okay. Close enough. Close enough, yeah. Tell me, a day before prayer line, what started happening to you? Uh, have you guys ever been in trouble? Like you're speeding and then all of a sudden you see the red and blues behind you. That feeling you get in your heart like, oh no, mom's going to find out. Like, so that, that feeling of just being afraid, but afraid for a stupid reason. Like, well, it's my fault. I had it coming, but man, I wish it wouldn't happen this way. I wish I wasn't in trouble right now. Mm -hmm. And it started to well up in me and I just started feeling like, man, maybe I shouldn't go tomorrow. Maybe it's... You know, I can, I can go to the gym instead. I'll just go to Portland and spend money I don't have. I'll, you know, do this, do that, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then around 1 o'clock at night, I thought, maybe I should just go to the bar. Maybe I should just, you know, call up an old girlfriend. Maybe I should this or that or whatever. And I ended up staying up all night and just fighting against this. Everything that went through my head was just saying, don't go, don't go, don't go. And then begging me not to go at around 4 in the morning. And uh, I said, I'm going to. I have to. And then about 5.30, I thought, why don't I just hang myself? I should just kill myself right here. There's a rope in my closet. Sure, I could just do it. And I just thought, God, this is it. This is, I have to do this or it's going to kill me. And so I got here this, um, that morning on Sunday, and I texted Vlad and said, man, I'm terrified. <laughs> and he texted me back. He said, don't be afraid. Jesus is with you. And the second, the second he said that, it was like a, the final gunshot. You know, he, he knew it was done. And I just gave up. I felt my body just go limp, just... That's it. And, and then when was, deliverance was happening, that evil spirit, he left your body. And it wasn't him that was terrified. It was the devil that was terrified. Because the devil has been here long enough and he's seen the prayer lines and stuff. So it's not his first rodeo. And so he typically knows what's going to happen there. And he was the one that was terrified and pushing him to not to come so he doesn't receive his deliverance. And after that, so you got delivered. How did you feel afterwards? I felt like I was about 20 feet tall and full of muscle, you know. So. <laughs> oh, the girls usually feel light. Guys feel tall and big. So different. I, I felt made new. Um, I uh -huh. tried to explain it to Vlad that if you could imagine every star in the universe and then bring those all together inside this one little 200-pound piece right here, you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's, you just take all these little bright points, and there's no darkness in between them anymore, and then put them all together and build it like that. Build it piece by piece and cell by cell and part by part, and then actually give it a heart and give it a purpose. And that was what I found in Christ. Come on. Yeah. Amen. So, you texted that lady. Oh, Can you tell yeah. us what happened. <laughs> So, so the lady who introduced you to those little uh, giving yeah. candies to the old people in Trima, huh? Now, keep in mind, black lipstick, black eyeliner, black everything, you know, wears crowns outside. Um, so she tells me, well, the older gods were here first and they don't let you leave. If you try to leave, your life is over. They, they're very, they have a spirit of vengeance in each one of them. And I said, well, I really don't care because my God's bigger. And the second I told her that, she just said, well, looks like that's the end for you then. You're never going to be happy again. I said, yeah, I know. I'm going to be ecstatic for the rest of my life because I have God. 